This is part 40 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss retrieving session ID in WCF service and in the client application. This is continuation to part 39, so please watch part 39 before proceeding. In order to send messages from a particular client to a particular service instance on the server, WCF uses session ID. Notice that client1 session ID matches with the session ID of service instance for client 1 and the same is the case for client 2 and service instance for client 2. So basically WCF uses these session IDs to send and receive messages between the client and their respective service instance. But keep in mind there are different types of sessions in WCF. You know, For example, there are application sessions, transport sessions, reliable sessions, etc. We'll discuss each of these sessions in great detail in a later video session. For now, just concentrate on how to retrieve session ID both in the WCF service and in the client application. So, to retrieve session ID from the client application, all you need to do is on the proxy instance, you know, there's an inner, inner channel property on that. There is session ID property. So that's what we use to retrieve the session ID from the client application. On the WCF service side, you know, every time you invoke an operation, there's something called operation context. And that has got this current property. And on that, we have session ID property, which should uh, you know return the session ID. So let's go ahead and make these changes to our WCF service and the client application. We'll be working with the same example that we worked with in the previous session. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So here we have our simple service. So within our service implementation file. So here we have the operation increment number which our client applications call. So every time somebody calls this um, you know operation we want to print the session ID you know within the service host console and in order to do, do that let's use system.console class and write line method to print the session ID. So let's just say session ID colon and then we use operation context dot there is current property and on that we have session ID which returns the session ID as a string so that's what we want to print so every time somebody invokes this operation um, you know we are going to print that message out onto the console alright so with this change let's go ahead and run our service host and now let's get to the client application. So, you know, when we click the button, you know, we are showing the number, you know, in a message box. Along with the number, let's also display the session ID. Let's actually use here backslash n, which is going to print, you know, a new line character so that session ID will be printed in the next line. So let's say session ID colon and then to that we need to append the session ID. So what is our service instance uh, here? It's called client. So on the client object, we should have inner channel property. And on that, we have session ID. Again, session ID is returned as a string. All right, with these changes, let's go ahead and run our client application. And then invoke the button. Look at that. Session ID is F365B5. You know, that's what is the session ID on the client. Let us see what we have got on the server. Look at this. We have a different session ID. Okay, let's actually click this button once more. So our session has timed out. Let's click it once more. Okay, look at that. It starts with F365. But on the server side, look at that. It is CE828. So why are these session IDs different? We expected them to be same because that's what we thought WCF uses, uh, you know, basically to send and receive messages between the client and the service instance. But in our case here, actually the session IDs are different between the client and the WCF service. Why is that? That's because the client side and server side session IDs are correlated using something called reliable session ID. So here within our example, we're actually using TCP binding. Let's actually flip to our WCF service. 
and if you look at the app config file look at that we are using TCP binding and TCP binding has got different types of sessions okay now what we are interested in is reliable session you know that's what the core that's what correlate messages between the client and you know the WCF service um, so here by default for this TCP binding reliable sessions are disabled so let's go ahead and enable reliable sessions and to enable reliable sessions all you need to do is use this reliable session element and set the enabled attribute to true alright so let's go ahead and close the client and the service host which are um, which is running let's rerun the service host let's go back to the client application and let's update our service reference and then run our client application invoke service so now look at that it starts with a to double a you know the session ID on the client and let's look at on the server look at that it is a to double a now the session IDs match okay so invoke it again uh, once again session timed out let's click the button look at that this time it's 69a and that's what we got there you know the same session ID is used okay so if TCP binding is being uh, used with reliable sessions disabled then the client and server session IDs will be different and why is that that's because the client side and server side session IDs are correlated using the reliable session ID on the other hand if reliable sessions are enabled obviously the session IDs will be same okay but in case of WS HTTP binding irrespective of whether reliable sessions are enabled or not the session IDs will always be same both you know on the client as well as on the WCF service side let's actually look at that in action let's close the client that's running let's also close the service host let's flip to our WCF service at the moment we are using uh, net TCP binding so here the binding is net TCP let's actually change that to WS HTTP binding but before that let's use here the binding as WS HTTP binding let's give it a name let's call it WS HTTP and let's set receive timeout um, to something like you know the default or let's get rid of receive timeout altogether we don't really require it and then reliable sessions let's actually disable them and say if the session IDs on the client and the WCF service will be the same and we can get rid of this net TCP binding because we are not going to use that anymore and all we need to do here is specify that we want to use WS HTTP binding and we also need to change the binding configuration attribute to use WS HTTP alright so let's go ahead and run our service host so with the WCF service now we are using um, WS HTTP binding and we have uh, disabled reliable sessions now let's go back to the client application let's actually delete the service reference and let's add a service reference so this should find out our WCF service so let's specify the namespace as simple service click OK alright now the client is also using reliable sessions I mean WS HTTP binding so let's go ahead and run our client invoke service look at that the session ID starts with C3130 so C3130 now let's click OK let's click that once more and look at that it's the same session ID C3130 and on the WCF service C3130 okay 
So with WSH HTTP binding, irrespective of whether reliable sessions are enabled or not, the session IDs will be same. But in case of TCP binding, if reliable session um, is disabled, then the client session ID will not match with server-side session ID. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.